As I said previously, I want to separate out my discussion of the Supreme Court from the courts that I've been looking at thus far. The Supreme Court, formerly the House of Lords, is the final court of appeal for all United Kingdom civil cases and criminal cases from England, Wales and Northern Ireland. It hears appeals on arguable points of law of general public importance and it concentrates on cases of the greatest public and constitutional importance. So, the Supreme Court can hear appeals from the following courts in each jurisdiction of England and Wales. The Court of Appeal Civil Division, the Court of Appeal Criminal Division, in certain limited criminal cases, the High Court, and leapfrog appeals from the High Court that bypass the Court of Appeal. That's why they're called leapfrog appeals. To complete this analysis, I want to mention the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. The Judicial Committee of the Privy Council hears civil and criminal appeals from Commonwealth countries and also has an appellate jurisdiction over a range of professional disciplinary proceedings, church matters and matters relating to devolution. I now want to talk about the two different European courts that are relevant to the interpretation, development and implementation of the two bodies of European law that are of immense relevance to the development of British law. Now, we need to make a, a careful distinction here between the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg and the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Don't confuse these two courts. The European Court of Human Rights interprets and enforces the European Convention on Human Rights. The European Court of Justice develops, interprets and enforces the law of the European Union. Uh, at a later point I'll say much more, I'll go into the nature of these sources of law in much greater detail. The important point for the moment is to understand that we have two distinct sources of law and two distinct courts that deal with that law. In other words, we have the law of the European Union and the European Court of Justice and the European uh, Court of Human Rights, which deals with the law emanating from or stemming from the European Convention on Human Rights. So they're different courts, different bodies of law. The only link, I suppose, which is simplifying a little bit, is the idea that they're European. I want to say a few more words about the European Court of Justice, ECJ for uh, short, before, in, before turning my attention to the European Court of Human Rights. The European Court of Justice is the highest court in the European Union and it outranks national supreme courts. But note, that's not in all areas of law, that's only in those areas of law which are relevant to the European Union. In other words, uh, technically and correctly, the most supreme court in the hierarchy of courts is the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg, but only in those areas of law where the European Union has jurisdiction, or in other words, where those areas of law which are covered by European law. Now, what lies in the background here, and it's perhaps worth saying this in passing just to uh, uh, outline these ideas, is the fact that the uh, United Kingdom is part of the European Union. Now, I don't want to say a great deal about the European Union, but one can imagine it as um, a trade block, uh, a social market, uh, in other words, something that uh, by virtue of the, it, its founding treaties, its founding laws, tries to bring together a, a trade block with certain forms of social security and social protection. Um, the fundamental idea of the EU is it's supranational. It's above the nation state. It's above the UK, France, Germany, etc. In other words, for, the, the, for this uh, concept to work, there needs to be a court that applies the same body of law throughout all those countries that are part of the European Union. Hence, it follows, does it not? that the European Court of Justice must have supreme lawmaking power, if you like, over those areas of law that relate to the European Union. Otherwise, the, the experiment, the idea, the actuality of Europe simply wouldn't work. There are other complicated uh, issues that this raises. These issues are not for now, they're for later. The point that I really want to make at this point is that the ECJ, European Court of Justice, is the highest court in the EU, and it also ranks national supreme courts. The point I now want to turn to takes us to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Now, the important thing to bear in mind here is that this is a court of human rights. If one looks at these matters in detail, 
like the matters we were looking for at uh, a few moments ago, one finds complexity rather than clear distinction. Be I'm saying this because the European Union is also committed to human rights. But the human rights in the European Union come from different treaties, different sources of law. So when we're talking about the European Convention on Human Rights, we're talking about the court, the European Court of Human Rights, that deals with the human rights that come out of the Convention. And it's an international court. It's an international court of human rights. The complexity here perhaps will take us to the Human Rights Act of 1998 and the fact that the Convention, the European Convention of Human Rights, has been made part of domestic law in the United Kingdom. This means that uh, a litigant in a court in the United Kingdom can make use of the European rights contained, the human rights contained in the Convention, without necessarily going to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, but because the United Kingdom is a signatory to an international treaty, i.e. the Convention of Human Rights, there is still a possibility that the UK as a country can be taken to an international court if the UK is in breach of its human rights. I'm afraid this is somewhat complicated, but I hope that you have the basic point there. We're concerned with the European Court of Human Rights, with jurisdiction over human rights. Uh, and the United Kingdom as a country, not an individual litigant then, as a country, can find itself before that court if it is in breach of its international human rights obligations, as stated in the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, as these lectures go along, I'll say a great deal more about the role and the status of human rights in English law, which will, of course, take us back to the Human Rights Act of 1998, which is a very, very important piece of law. For the moment, though, I just want you to bear in mind that the European Court of Human Rights is a court of immense importance, which has jurisdiction over uh, human rights law, and the rulings of the European Court of Human Rights are also ex of uh, extreme importance to the development of human rights law in the United Kingdom. Okay.